I look at what if somebody could help me in a huge way in my life and they spoke, they spoke like not excellent English, which that wasn't even ec ex excellent English the way I said it, grammar. But what if they could really actually help the world, but they didn't because they were afraid of the way people were going to perceive their English or their Japanese or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what a loss to the world. Yeah. Yeah. All for an, the illusion of the fear that people are going to judge me. And they are, mm -hmm. which you've heard me say before, people are always going to judge you. And, it, I, and actually, you know, cultures here, India is a really judgmental culture, even in the families, you know, a very, very judgmental culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, Japan, I don't remember as much when I lived there, but it's very judgmental and that everybody has to stay in line. Mm -hmm. and everybody has to do all these things that for family honor and respect. Mm -hmm. And those cultures in particular, people are going to judge you all day long. And then you have to decide, am I going to be loyal to me? And my autonomy, I, I'm like, here's the thing. Am I going to be happy? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be happy? Or am I going to just put up with life and just go through it till I kick the bucket and they put me in the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that, be, that being happy and then making a contribution, which you, you kind of mentioned a little bit yeah. earlier on as well. And that actually um, relates to one of the other questions that I got from um, the Sassada community mm -hmm. and that was, um, so this is from one of the, your, cause you have a podcast as well, which yeah, yeah. we love. Thank you. Um, we'll, put, we'll put a link to that as well. And one thing, so this was the question you said in your podcast that everybody has his or her own calling in life. Mm -hmm. How did you find yours? This is so simple. Mm -hmm. I just listen to my heart. Oh. I just do what I love to do. Mm -hmm. That, that, that is as simple as that. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. If Bill Gates right now, everyone knows who Bill Gates is, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Bill yeah. Gates came and said, I will give you $1 billion to stop what you're doing. Literally, $1 billion to stop what you're doing. I wouldn't do it. I feel like I'd be violating my soul to do that. So mm -hmm. for what? So for money, and I'm going to kick the bucket in 30 years, whatever, anyway. Mm -hmm. why, would I, why would I trade my life? for a billion dollars when it's finite. I'm not going to have it anyway when I leave the planet. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I didn't do what I do, I'm violating my soul mission, which I call my dharma, which is the order of why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And so many people, that's a very simple answer to that. So many people don't do what they want to do. They do what they think they have to do because yeah. they think they have to make money or someone else expects it of them. Yes. I do not live that way. Uh-huh. Now, was it always like that? Yes, it's always. I have never worked corporate, even out of college. I knew that it wasn't for me. Oh. Uh, and I've always known, like, I've always liked this path. But when I've been on, I've been on it really seriously, professionally for 25 years, mm -hmm. this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. And I'll just put it this way. Maybe somebody can relate this way. It just feels right to me to be on this path. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just, it's my home metaphorically speaking, you know, this is, this is just what works through me. Right. And as a result, I've had a lot of success in my, in my field. One reason is because I love what I do. Uh -huh. People are never going to be great at their jobs or excellent at their job if they don't love what they do. Yeah. You know, and people can argue that maybe mechanically somebody can be, you know, like an accountant, which you have to have your numbers right. Mm -hmm. But you know, your 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 heart and your soul is not invested into doing any more than what's just expected if you're in a job you don't like. Mm -hmm. But I just, to answer the question, I just knew that, I mean, I just, I follow my internal guidance. This is the path that I'm supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. If it paid me little money, I would be on this path. Right. Now, something that comes up for me, because I've known you for 10 months now, and I know that you talk about um, listening to your internal guidance, and mm -hmm. what that gets in the way is the, the thoughts in the mind. There's a lot of yeah. chatter going on, and I think this is something that, the, uh, that our listeners might be interested to know more about. That's where I, you know, I tell people, stop thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, stop thinking. I did a podcast episode on your highest potential and your highest potential is not being the richest person in Japan or, or anything external. Living your highest potential is learning to quiet your mind mm -hmm. and to hear higher wisdom come through you. What I call your sense, S-E-N-S-E, -S -E. Mm -hmm. common sense, which is left brain analytical thinking, but mm -hmm. your higher awareness, your higher sense, your higher guidance. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure... 
I think in Japan, I think the word is satori, mm -hmm. which is awakening, yeah. I believe. Yes. When we quiet the mind, we have that experience, which is the awakening. Mm -hmm. That's when we come alive. Mm -hmm. We're not alive with all the chatter, 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 because chatter is just brain chatter that we've learned as little kids about what we should do and how dutiful we should be. And we should respect this and respect that. And we should go to school. And, we should, and, and Japan, really, all those memories are coming back. Japan is extremely or was extremely rigid yes. about you have to do well in school. Yeah. Uh, because I remember when I lived there, the kids that I, I lived with, uh, the host kids, I mean, they were studying like all year long because the objective was to get good grades, great, mm -hmm. amazing grades. Mm -hmm. And the reality is if we look at, in our world, we think that the smarter somebody is and the better educated, the better, uh, the better chance that we have in life. Yeah. But I have seen Harvard graduates who can't hold down a job, mm -hmm. for real, uh, because it's all emotional. I used to, ha I, I met this kid one time, a Harvard graduate who was a bicycle messenger in New York because he could not hold down a corporate job. Um, it was so not him, mm -hmm. but we're forced in this, this world all over the world. And India is the same. I don't know why I'm picking on India or saying India, but it's the same all over the world, mm -hmm. especially like even immigrants when they come to the United States. Um, like a lot of first generation immigrant kids are expected to do well. Why? Because their parents say, you have this opportunity, do not waste this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And these kids become robots. Mm -hmm. And they, they literally just hop in line. And I'm not taking away from anybody in a derogatory way, mm -hmm. but they live their entire lives from just like step one, step two, step three, step four. Oops, I can't step out of line. And if I do, I'm bad and people are going to judge me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, stop. And the, 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 the finish your question, when we have that, when we quiet the mind, we go into that state of satori that you call in, J in Japan awakening. Mm -hmm. But then, it, then what comes in is courage. Mm -hmm. Do I have the courage to live my path? Because no matter what I do, people are going to judge me. Do I have the courage to live in the way that's going to fulfill my heart? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have a strong belief in yourself, right? You believe very strongly in what you do. One of the other questions that I received was, how do you keep believing in yourself? I don't. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter to me that I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. My podcast every day, um, I, people say, you know what? It's like one of the, the most unique podcasts because it's not just information. I mean, you give me something, every podcast that I can use. Mm hmm so with my podcast alone, not even including my programs that literally revolutionize people's lives, mm -hmm. with the podcast, I'm changing people's lives. So then the next question is, why do I have to believe in myself? Why don't I just do what I do, mm -hmm. love what I do? And you know what? Everything also take care of itself. Right. I had posted it in the group, the TCP group, about a dancer named Martha Graham. Mm -hmm. And there's this quote that she said. She said, something along the lines of you have a life force and an energy that flows through you. Mm -hmm. It's not your job to judge how good that it is. Yeah. Basically, it's just your job to put it out there. So it's not my job, which people get into, well, you got to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. It, it, can it help? Absolutely. But the way that I look at it, the where I work from, and you know this, is I don't have to believe in myself to help people. I just actually offer and I help. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say, well, I really believe that I can help people. Mm -hmm. I have evidence that I help people. So why do I need to believe in myself? Why don't I just go do what I want to do, mm -hmm. which is help people and mm -hmm. let everything else take care of itself. That's an illusion that a lot of people get into that you have to believe in yourself. That is just not true. Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot of people do things and they didn't believe they could do it. Mm -hmm. Right? You've seen that, right? Yeah. Definitely. I didn't believe, you know, people will say, I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't believe I could do that, but they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. That's why I think getting into, you have to put all the motivational speakers, you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't buy into it. Right. Oh, wow. That is, that is a really powerful one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, thank you. I think it was Kanako who asked that question. So fantastic mm -hmm. question there, Kanako. Thank you for that. And but hang on. So I hope she, hopefully she gets the full, yeah. the full measure of that is that 
we're told so much we have to believe in ourselves, but that's just not true. Kaneko, Kaneko is her name? Kaneko. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that she's probably your number one fan in Japan. Well, tell her this, <laughs> I mean, she's listening, and thank you, Kaneko, is that what she's really saying is not about belief, it's about confidence. She's right. wanting confidence to do something, and here's the illusion of confidence. People always say, I want more confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's not, tr that's, that's the illusion because the confidence comes from competence. Mm -hmm. You do something, the more competent you become. Yeah. I remember, again, back to Japan, back in the 80s when girls were just starting to drive. And I remember watching this girl, this teenage girl in her driving class. And I was just kind of laughing at it because she was laughing because she wasn't doing a great job her first time in the car. Mm -hmm. And I thought back then, I'm like, you know what? A month from now, she's going to be zipping around driving all over the place mm -hmm. because I started driving earlier than her, her in the States because I grew up in the country and I had to get what's called a hardship license where I could drive earlier for hardship reasons. Mm -hmm. What Conoco really is asking about is what she's really saying is I want more confidence in some area of my life. Mm -hmm. Confidence comes with the competence, which means just go do it. And then a lot of people won't do something and especially in cultures like Japan, they won't do something unless they can do it well and, and unless they yes. look good in front of other people. So yeah. you know what? I'm not going to speak in front of people unless I can do it really well and I look good because I don't want to look bad. Yep. But guess what? To get really good or to get, to get great, you have to be good. To be good, you have to be bad. To be, <laughs> you don't have to be, but you're generally bad. Before you're bad, you have to do something so Get started and do something and build the skill set, build the expertise, and that will automatically bring the competence, which brings the confidence. Absolutely. But you can do it by sitting on the sidelines. Absolutely. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Um, so mm -hmm. another one of the questions, I think this is the final question that, that I had from the, um, from the listeners in the community, is what is the source of your positive energy? Well, I'm not always positive. Uh, I mean, I'm on this planet like everyone else. I have my lessons like everyone else. There are times that I have to keep what I call moving my attention to be positive. Mm. Uh, you know what? Um, like my, uh, just a very, very personal statement. My sister and I were texting yesterday about, um, you know. Oh, we have a little internet. We, we had a little internet Glip yep. this. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So you're yeah. with your sister. Sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said, um, I said, I'm really looking forward to being in Sedona later this week. I'm going on Friday. That's all that I said because I really enjoy. Obviously, I bought a home there. I really enjoy the energy there. Mm. And she started to say something, and I said, "Please don't coach me," <laughs> because she, she was going to say. Well, something like you need to be grateful for your, their, your house in Dallas also. Mm -hmm. And I, what, I, what I didn't say is, well, I can't wait to leave Dallas because there's so much traffic. I want to go to Sedona. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. I just said I'm looking forward to being there. Mm -hmm. And she was interpreting it as I was complaining and not being grateful for the house in Dallas. And I wasn't. And so she said, well, sometimes you don't appreciate what you have. And that doesn't mean it's true. It just means that's her observation or her intention mm. or her, 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 her interpretation, not intention, her interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't definitely, definitely don't see myself as a negative person. I'm in the world just like everyone else. There are things that I watch, I observe. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you know, I really wish that didn't happen in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but where I go to is one place, and you know, this is the place that I tell everyone to go to. It's a safe place. The safest place we can go mm -hmm. is do your best or be happy today. Just be happy today. Mm -hmm. And so many of us, it's so challenging because especially in places like Tokyo where you're, you're, you're sandwiched in a, a literally like sardines in a, in a subway, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just crowded and it's noisy and the, 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 the bills and the work and everything else. But when you really take a step back and I do this, I really take a step back and I'm like, you know, well, here, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Remember the conversation we had about water? Yes, That's I remember. My house? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Here's a lesson, everyone. Is I, I do this. Every time that I use water, I give gratitude for it. Mm. And it's, I've, done this, I've done this for probably 
10 years, maybe. Uh -huh. So I filled this up right before our call. People can't see visually. Uh, I'm holding up a, a water container of 32 ounces of water. Uh -huh. Every time that I fill this up, I hold it in my hand for a second. And literally, I just say to the water, thank you for sustaining my life. Uh -huh. Because without water, I'd be dead in two days, thereabouts. Uh -huh. I think we, we, we leave the planet pretty quickly without water. Uh -huh. So... I don't, I don't know that it's, even though I appreciate the question about positive energy, I don't know that it's positive energy. I, I don't call it that. Mm. What I look at is how can I, I work from a vibration and a resonance of being happy. Mm. And you know what? The, uh, truthful, very truthful is I'm pretty good at it, but there are days like just this isn't the best of days today, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, don't, I don't go into a funk. Um, I, I never go into a funk. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully everybody knows what that word means, but like a bad negative place where I'm, I don't ever, ever, I used to years ago, I don't go into those places. Mm -hmm. If I'm there, I recognize I'm in the wrong place and I need to come back to, you know what, right now in this moment, mm -hmm. right now, life is amazing. No matter what's going on in my life, no matter physically, mentally, emo life is amazing right now because I'm on the planet. So that's where I go to answer the question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's shifting your attention. That this. Yeah. Yep, moving your attention. Always, always, yeah. always moving your attention. Yeah, and that goes back to what you said earlier about having a choice because you have a choice about yes. thoughts too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you, you move your attention anywhere in life. For, so it's as simple as this. If you hate your job, where's mm -hmm. your attention? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. If you're just enduring life, where's your intention? Mm -hmm. If you have no money, where's your intention? If you're angry, where's your attention? Mm -hmm. You know, and I might have said intention, but attention. You know, that's where is your attention? Because you all, this is in the final call of the transformational program we just finished up on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I said, were you on the call? By the I way, I wasn't. I okay. was not. Yeah, I was. I said, I've been a lot, traveling a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm listening well, to the recording. <laughs> got it. Okay. Well, you'll see. I said, hey guys. What is the number one thing that I told you I wanted you to get the very first day we worked together? It's almost four months later. What is the number one most powerful thing? If you ask me, what is the one takeaway from this program that above all else that will change my life? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the phrase and the concept of move my attention. Yeah. Because you are where your attention is. Mm -hmm. And if you're physically ill and your attention is on that, you just perpetuate being physically ill. Mm -hmm. If you're happy and your attention is on that, you perpetuate that. Mm -hmm. But let's make this mechanical and real. So when a person doesn't have any money, their attention is on no money, no money, no money, no money. And what they do is they keep creating no money because that's where their attention is. Mm -hmm. What if they move their attention to, well, what can I do right now differently? Who can I be and what can I do right now differently that will generate the money that I want? Mm -hmm. That takes the person to a completely different emotional space than no money, no money, no money, which is where their attention is. Mm -hmm. Everyone listening, write that down. Move my attention. Anytime you find yourself in a place you do not want to be in, emotionally, physically, mentally, any 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 place, that's where your attention is. Mm -hmm. Move your attention. Mm -hmm. And that's simple. And that's simple as keep let's keep this simple. That's simple as choosing a new thought. Because what will happen once you choose a new, new thought, even though this is so simple, we miss it. Once you choose a new thought, your feelings change. Just like mm -hmm. that. Yep. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I know that you have another mm -hmm. appointment after this. So we need to be, um, to be wrapping up and I will, I mean, we've, you've shared so much inspiration and wisdom as we've been talking today. I will definitely be telling our listeners a little bit more after sure. uh, in the outro about, um, a training that you've got coming up on September 4th. Yep. And, um, transformational training. It's, it's literally yeah. going to be training on quite literally where you want to start to transform your life. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. I will and we can do another one it. of these. We can do another one of these later in the month. If you want, if you have time or you're interested, we can talk again. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> that is sure. wonderful. Sure. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to, to share today with our listeners or are we all good? You know, I always get that question asked at the end of every podcast and I do a lot and I've said a lot and the more, what I find a lot of times, even though we went an hour is many times less is more mm. because when that's why I keep my podcast episodes 30 minutes or under mm -hmm. 
is because some people go an hour and a half on their podcast. There's no way anybody can consume that. Mm. And they forget how, by the time they're done, they've already forgot what they heard at the beginning. Yep. You know? So if I could give everyone one take, well, there's several takeaways, but the number one takeaway is if you're in an unhappy place, that's where your attention is. Mm -hmm. Move your attention. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. I really appreciate it very much. All right. Thanks.